And what I'd like to do today is show you how I make, in my mind, the perfect steak tartare. We're going to be using a bit of fillet steak. I know it's expensive, but believe me, it's worth it. The USDA from Tom. It's got a lovely marbling in it. We're going to make some lovely croutons out of this brioche. Some beef fat and some bone marrow finished with parmesan. We're going to soy cure some egg yolks to put on top. We've got some cake. So the first part of the process is to seal off the beef. So we're going to seal it off in a nice hot pan just to kill any bacteria that there is on the outside. We'll just seal it off, we'll pop it in the freezer and then after that we'll dice it up. So now for our soy cured egg yolks. So we've got our eggs, I don't know if you've ever done this before, separate. So I lightly crack the egg on the edge, open it up, and then I pour the yolk into there, then back into there, back into there again, cure. It's just soy sauce, and I'm sorry to have to say, you're gonna to have to get your hands dirty now. So the only way I've found to get the, all of the white off the eggs is to physically take your, put your hand in there and pull them out. Just drop them into that soy, and then we're going to leave them in there for 30 to 40 minutes, and you're going to see the difference. So there's your button shallots, which are quite small. So just again. So nice little lines like that across. And then once again, I find if you chop through again, you can make the shallot a little bit bitter. So it's better if you can just do one cut. You will have a little bit of wastage, but don't worry too much about that. So shallots if ever possible, because they are sweeter. As you can see, and I'm going to put it into the... Now we've got these lovely croutons, as you can see, all nicely cut. I'm just going to put these in, like you would a roast potato. Give them a little sift, like so, shake them up, put them into the tray. Right, now for actual tartare. So I've popped it in the freezer to firm it up. It's really important that you use a, a different board. We use red boards in professional kitchens, but as long as you've got another board clean, make sure you wash your hands, sanitise, and also make sure your knife is nice and clean. So you literally just want to trim, trim that very, very delicately, also almost shave it. So whatever knife you feel is best for doing that, all you're doing is you're taking off them edges in case there's any bacteria in there, just as you can see. Now I've shaved off my beef, I'm just going to slice it. I like to keep it not too thin. Can wear gloves if you feel safer. Just nice little dice, just like that. Okay. All right, now for our parsley. So I've got some lovely flat leaf parsley here. You can put chives in if you like chives. But I'm personally a big fan. So all I'm doing is creasing it all up and I'm just running my knife. It's a nice sharp knife. I'm just running it slowly through there. Like that, I like it nice and big. I don't like to... I remember when I first started cooking, what we used to do is we used to chop it for about 25 minutes, squeeze it out, wash it, so it was like a little dried up curly parsley, it was horrible. Now as you can see, the croutons are nice while they're still hot, you want a great loads of parmesan on them. There's our lovely croutons, as you can see. I think what I'll do is I'll give them a try and make sure they're happy. Lovely. Now for our capers. I use the small ones. I don't know if you've been in any fancy restaurants lately or you follow Instagram chefs, but you've seen nasturtium leaves. Do nasturtiums, they're actually from the same plant. These are actually the flowers that they pick off. But they're very nice. Again. Now let's do our crudishons. I call them crudishons in front. <laughs> I call them gherkins. They're a bit not as sweet, but you can use either. 
I like both actually. These are a little bit dry. Now we've got everything together for the final mix. So there's our lovely beef. We've got our croutons ready. Plate with our capers, shallots, and all our other seasonings. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to mix it. Now we're going to mix it up. As you see, I've just lightly seasoned this. With some salt, get your seasoning right in there with the meat. And we're going to put a splash of our soy sauce. Gonna let it marinate. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a slug of Worcester sauce. Bit of ketchup for sweetness. A nice bit of Dijon mustard. Not everyone uses this, but I do. It's quite nice if you can do this all in front of the guests. Just Stirring all my soy cured egg yolks. So I'm going to put two into that and I'll whisk this. I'm going to give it a really nice whisk. Just get all them flavours in there. Give it a really nice whisk. So now you see, now the taste test. That's lovely. I like it a little bit spicy, so a little bit more spice. Now we're going to serve it up to serve. I hope you enjoyed that because I certainly did. I must say I'm a massive fan of steak tartare, especially when the beef's of that quality. You can get the USDA fillet from Tom Hickson online. Also the recipe will be in the blog.